Today, let's learn Chapter 5, Consumer Welfare and Policy Analysis. There are some important concepts in this chapter. The consumer surplus is the monetary difference between the maximum amount that a consumer is willing to pay for the quantity of the good purchased and what the consumer actually paid. It is the area under the inverse demand curve and above the market price up to the quantity purchased by the consumer. If the price of a good increases, the consumer surplus will decrease. That is the amount of income we would have to give the consumer to offset the harm of an increase in price. One measure of the harm of a price increase is the income we will have to give the consumer to maintain the consumer's utility. The expenditure function is the minimum expenditure necessary to achieve a specific utility level given a set of prices. The welfare change associated with price increase from P1 to P1 star can be expressed as follows. There are two options to choose the utility level that should be held constant. When we hold the initial utility constant, we are talking about the compensating variation. When we hold the new utility constant, we are using the equivalent variation. Compensating variation is the amount of money we would have to give a consumer after a price increase to keep the consumer on their original indifference curve or initial utility. Equivalent variation is the amount of money we would have to take away from a consumer to harm the consumer as much as the price increase did. Indifference curves and budget lines can be used to determine compensating variation and equivalent variation. The original budget line is LA. The new budget line after price increase is LB. To find the compensating variation, we need to shift the new budget line upwards until it is tangent to the original indifference curve. The vertical distance between the two parallel lines is the compensating variation. To find the equivalent variation, we focus on the new indifference curve. We shift the original budget line downwards until it is tangent to the new indifference curve. The vertical distance between the two parallel budget lines is the equivalent variation. There were three measures of the consumer's welfare change. The consumer surplus change, the compensating variation, and the equivalent variation. The uncompensated demand curve is related to the consumer surplus change, while the compensated demand curves are related to the compensating variation and equivalent variation. The compensated demand curve going through the original equilibrium is associated with the compensating variation, while the compensated demand curve going through the new equilibrium is associated with the equivalent variation. For a price increase of a normal good, the compensating variation is larger than the consumer surplus change, which is larger than the equivalent variation in absolute values. 
government programs can change the consumer's budget constraints and affect consumer welfare. Quota reduces the number of units that consumer buys, so it changed the budget line. Subsidy causes a rotation or parallel shift of the budget constraint line. Welfare programs may produce kings in budget constraint. Let's look at the examples. The original equilibrium is Q1 and the original quantity is Q11. If the quota is smaller than the original quantity, it would generate kink in budget line. The new equilibrium is E2, which is on a lower indifference curve. If we want to find the equivalent variation, we focus on the new indifference curve, which is the lower indifference curve and the original price system without a kink. We parallel shift the original budget line downwards until it's tangent to the new indifference curve. And the vertical distance will be the equivalent variation. Next, let's look at the effect of food stamps on consumer welfare. Suppose the initial equivalent is say the food stamps generate kink budget line and the new equivalent is B. If the consumer is given cash of the same value, the budget line will have no kink. It increases the opportunity set. And the equilibrium will be C, which is on a higher indifference curve. Because food stamps can only be used on food, consumers are potentially worse off if they would find it optimal to consume less food and more other goods than allowed by the program. However, food stamps are commonly used because from a nutrition standpoint, it encourages appropriate expenditure on food. Individuals is not always rational. They may use the cash to purchase something that's not good for them. Second, it's more likely to receive support from taxpayers. Third, the program has a positive externality it will benefit the society. Finally, we derive the labor supply curve using the labor leisure choice model. The effect of a wage increase can be decomposed into the substitution effect and the income effect. From E1 to E star is the substitution effect, which is caused by the increase of the opportunity cost of leisure or the price of leisure, which is the wage rate. Since the opportunity cost of leisure increases, the consumer will consume less leisure and work more. The income effect is from E star to E2. An increase in wage makes you richer and can consume more leisure if leisure is a normal good. It makes you work less. The substitution effect and the income effect of a wage increase move in opposite directions if the substitution effect dominates the income effect, as is shown in the graph, 
the individual will work more. If the incoming fat dominates the substitution fat, the individual will work less. That is why a backward bending labor supply curve is possible. When wage rate is low, an increase in wage rate causes an increase in labor supply. When the wage rate is extremely high, an increase in wage rate leads to a decrease in labor supply. The effect of imposing a marginal tax rate is to rotate the budget line inverse. Hours of work reduce as the effective wage decreases when substitution fat dominates the income effect. When the marginal income tax rate increases, the change of the income tax revenue is uncertain. The first term is positive, while the second term is negative if a lower effective wage rate will lower the hours of work. Finally, let's compare the TRICARE subsidy and the lump sum subsidy. The budget constraint line will rotate hours after the TRICARE subsidy because the TRICARE subsidy reduces the effective price of TRICARE. The new equilibrium is E2. If lump sum subsidy so that E2 is affordable, the budget constraint line is parallel to the original budget constraint line and goes through E2 and it will be tangent to a higher indifference curve which means the consumer has a high utility but the disadvantage is that the consumer may not consume as many hours of child care as the government wants them to have. Thank you so much for watching this video.